Alright, so our trip here in Maine, I have to stop and do some repairs. I regret never making a video about uh, the installation of our inverter, uh, this Gindel. Um, I probably should have made a video about it, but I, I never did. But uh, we're on our third one now. Um, it works really well when it works, but man, third one keeps having the same problem. It'll work for a while and then it just says OL for overload even when there's no load on it. So I gotta change this one out. And send it back. Here's where I located our inverter. There actually used to be a panel right here uh, covering up this compartment. Back there is our water. And you can see this, this inverter is quite large. Um, I removed the panel and found this nice spot to mount the inverter wired it back over to our electrical compartment where we can plug in if we need the inverter to run the AC power got my kill switch over here let's flick it on and I'll show you what's wrong with it I never really got around to put in the remote switch but uh, this one works fine it is our voltage and it gives that same error OL now there's nothing plugged into it and that's just what keeps going wrong with these so I gotta take this one out and put the new one in all right so one of the reasons I chose this inverter is because of the hardwire option hard wiring in a separate outlet um, that I can plug our 30 amp adapter into rather than running extension cords from all of these um, this is to give you ground because our power management system without that ground tie in there will show us a ground fault uh, so basically this plug is wired inside to connect the neutral and the ground together to fool the energy management system into thinking there's a real ground uh, that's a long discussion to have about RV electronics and grounds but uh, this is the standard way to get past that issue Anyway, I gotta take this thing apart and uh, swap it out. We purchased this inverter off of Amazon. Besides having the um, hardwire option, this one is a pure sine wave power inverter. It's a 4,000 watt running, 8,000 watt peak. So this inverter is big enough to run our microwave, to run the coffee maker. It can even run the AC, just not for very long, even though we've upgraded our batteries. I, if you can see here, this is kind of a mess. But uh, we took out the two coach batteries that were in here. This originally, this rig came with two six volt batteries. And we did a lot of research in retrospect, we probably should have gone with lithium uh, just for weight, not so much for capacity. Uh, but these will last us a long time because they are 6 volt deep cycle AGMs. And we put uh, six of them in here. I can't remember what the uh, I can't remember what the amperage rating is on these, but it gives us a decent amount of power. We're able to run the fans and everything all night cook with the microwave. So it was a good choice for us at the time to do this upgrade to allow us to um, boondock a little bit longer power supply. This RV will charge the batteries from the generator, it'll charge the batteries from shore power, and it'll charge the batteries uh, from the alternator. It's convenient. But this uh, third time inverter, I'm a pain in my neck at this point. The ironic part is, is this inverter has a lot of good reviews on Amazon uh, and I've gone over my installation several times to check to make sure I'm not doing something wrong. I think the only thing I might be doing wrong with this inverter is allowing it to run 
while the alternator is charging the batteries because it says in the instruction booklet don't run the alternate or don't charge the batteries while using the inverter and we had been running this inverter while we're going down the road so we don't have to run the generator and I'm thinking maybe that's causing the issue Shh, don't tell anybody I've got another solution for this inverter later on where I'm going to in install another transfer switch to switch between the inverter and shore power automatically and then still giving the generator priority that's a big meatball so that's the Gandel however you say it 12 volt system 4,000 watt continuous 8,000 watt surge like I said when it works it works good just can't stop this overload problem even though we're not overloading it remember in one of my previous videos I talked about having the right tool for the job again I'm using quality tools the right tool for the right job So in the Gindel kit, it comes with these wires. Now what I can't understand is why they don't give you the proper sized wire. It's almost like they expect you to double up the wires. Because this is not heavy enough gauge. I don't know if you're going to do 4,000 watts on 12 volts. What is this stuff? One. One gauge. I don't even never even heard of one gauge. This is some interesting stuff I don't know I didn't use these I made my own wires anyways these these wires that they come with I didn't like they weren't heavy enough gauge so I went and I put in all the wiring in there at uh, 2 aught 2 zero it's a double zero gauge it's a really big fat wire if you're gonna be pulling 4,000 watts through this thing uh, the 12 volt system needs a big heavy wire um, as short as possible from those batteries so you can get the amperage through the wire without heating anything up but I'm sure if you had to use these, that's what they come with. You can use them and probably will work fine. I just like to overkill. That's my thing to do is overkill. Especially when you're dealing with DC voltage. I'm more scared of DC voltage than I am of AC voltage. Just because the way it acts. Better safe than sorry. And since I've already installed this before, I'm becoming quite an expert at pulling this thing in and out. Now here's the wires I made. 2 0 double lot and then this is our plug that goes to our electrical compartment now let me get this thing installed <sighs> wrong tool now I got a boo-boo this thing's gonna teach me a lesson be using a socket for this tight electrical connections check is my coffee made with love and care it is perfect that's just the way I like it <laughs> get the high voltage connected back all right I got it all put back together the wires nice and tight uh, let's turn this switch back on no explosions that's good and we'll see what this one says. Look at that, no more overload issue. Zero watts output, 12.8 on the battery bank right now. Everything's good again. Now, let me show you how I wired this thing up. Obviously, the 12 volt connections are pretty basic, positive and negative with really big wire. And in our electrical compartment, for a temporary solution, wired it over to this plug here. So we can use our shore power cord and a 30 amp adapter. It's a 30 amp adapter. Plug it right in there and boom. Our shore power cord gets power from the inverter. That's how I did it. I plan on installing this transfer switch later so that the uh, shore power and inverter can flip 
between each other depending on which one is plugged in uh, obviously I'll give the shore power cord priority and then the shore power cord gets trumped by the generator that's just how this RV was set up to begin with just adding another circuit